Welcome back to Tied Up with the Morgans. It's 7.30 on the dot. Hunter and I are uh, gonna do the little sheets run. We're up at six. And uh, it's been a productive morning so far. Did all the stuff with the dogs and the chickens and Hunter and his morning routine. And uh, what else did we do? Oh, we just got off the computer. I just got off the computer. Uh, doing a bunch of emails, catching up on comments, things like that. Uh, beautiful morning. Sun rising behind me. It's 54 degrees. We are going to, uh, like I said, do the sheets run. And then we got a lot of stuff to dive into when we get back. We'll see where this, this video goes. We're about to leave. One of these chickens just jump up on the truck. They are crazy. Had one on the roof the other day. Okay, we just got back. Um, now what we're gonna do is finish staining. Uh oh, dropped my phone. And what I mean by that is, let's go over here to the chicken coop. This is something I started the other day. I am staining it with the same color that he used for the trim on the coop. And so I'm just about done, except these, these girls are getting all defensive and maybe in near their stuff. Even though they don't know that this is actually their run yet. But these boards on top, I did the bottoms of them yesterday. Um, this one I finished here and that one, but these ones are gonna take a little bit, just awkward, moving the ladder in and out between these. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna finish this right now. Shouldn't take me too long. And then got a lot more to do. All right, finished staining the run. The tops of these 4x4s are going to be cut off, so that's why they're not done. Um, not going to waste stain. But yeah. Next up, we'll be uh, putting the wire on. Looks nice. And then that matches. Coop. Yeah. Alright, next up, I got to, uh, on my chainsaw, put the chain back on. The chain came off when I was taking out tons of that autumn olive, honeysuckle and uh, privet, all that. That chain, just whenever there's like millions of limbs, sometimes I feel like it can get caught in there and uh, just popped off. So I'm going to throw that back on, but putting this ladder away right now and then we'll uh, take a look at the saw. All right. I should have showed you before I started here, um, but this was all nice and dirty so I cleaned this out I just used an air compressor and uh, blew all that out um, yeah so this is what we got we got the bar off so the 271 it's the farm boss uh, I've had this for maybe three years and you know I don't use it as often as my dad but uh as my dad uses his saws but I use it a good bit at home. Usually it's just cutting up trees that have fallen into the yard, which happens quite a bit um, with those uh, red pine behind our house. Those fall into the yard a good bit. So I'm usually cleaning those up. Or now my new mission and plan. Well, also I use it for maple syrup a lot of the times, cutting things up to burn. But uh, right now it's my mission with this is the uh, autumn olive, the honeysuckle, privet, all of that stuff that's just uh, way overgrown. Well, you don't want any of it, so any of it's bad, but I'm just trying to get rid of it because what happens is it gets so thick under those. They, they get so thick that nothing can grow under there and uh, there's no leaves under there, there's nothing. So it doesn't benefit the soil. It doesn't benefit birds, any wildlife. Um, it just dominates everything. So it needs thinned out. And uh, that's the plan right now. So we're just getting the saw cleaned up so I can do more of that. All right, the farm boss is back in business. So we're good to go there. Um, got the chain on, got it cleaned up a little bit. And uh, we're going to just put this in the back of the truck because I'm not using it now. I'll be taking this back to my house here later today. 
and then uh, we'll see what we get into next. But I really want to go uh, cut a bunch of invasives right now. No time at my parents while they're gone would be complete without a walk in the woods to look at plants and walk the dogs, right? And Archie can't wait. He's gone. I mentioned it was 54 this morning. I guess the low, according to my watch, was 52. And it's now 82, so warmed up a good bit. And to anyone wondering, this is what remains of the ghost pipe. Above ground. Black. Done. The uh, white snake root is starting to take off and bloom. Right here is white wood aster. Where's that white wood aster? Right there. Actually, all along the trail here. They don't get very tall compared to snake root and some other plants. Snake root. I wanted to uh, thank you guys though for all of the support uh, regarding the uh, plants. Big spider web. Just gonna walk around. It's really big. Um, regarding the plant videos and uh, my knowledge of plants, things like that. Uh, if it's not clear, I'm not an expert. Um, I'm learning more every day. Literally every day I'm reading about this stuff. I really enjoy it. Um, and I've just been diving into it and I'm having fun. And I'm sharing with you what I'm learning, sharing with you, you know, what I already know, what I don't know. So really that's uh, the plan with, with what I'm doing is I'm just trying to spread the message um, on the importance of native plants. Because uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about it, you know, and I think... I've heard that 99% of plants sold in uh, like the big box stores like Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, in those uh, garden centers are all non-native. And that's terrible. So really I hope through what I'm doing I can just share more of why that's terrible, why native is better, and kind of just teach you more about individual plants but also as a whole that you know wherever you're at you might have different plants maybe you have a completely different climate but even if you're in the desert there's still plants that are native to you that you should be planting instead of having you know um, like a turf yard or something like that like there's other options that are much that provide much more of a benefit so that's all I'm trying to share um, can't really put it into words it's a big huge umbrella right it's just a massive thing I'm trying to put into videos and we're just getting started um, so I hope you understand that and bear with me as I'm learning we're gonna learn together I'm gonna share what I know with you and uh, hopefully together we can have a better understanding of our own um, properties our own habitats uh, what it should be like the ecosystems that are around us and what they should be like and what they I guess what's really important is knowing what it used to be like and that is very important in knowing the history of your area knowing what was there, you know, before the Europeans came over even. Um, you know, Pennsylvania is known as Penn's Woods. Is where there's a spider web. Um, so that's what that means. And there's a lot of trees here, you know. So there's just so much that we're learning together. And uh, we're just getting started. So bear with me. It'll be worth it. And uh, we're going to have a good time doing it. Back from the walk, and these guys are ready to go eat. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna drop off some more rock, so I'm gonna do that, and then we'll go and I'll get Hunter something from dinner. And Ty's playing in his pool, right? <gasps> are you playing in the pool? Alright, I got the rocks unloaded. Now, oh, look at this. It's the last night of the car show, and he's turning into the car show. 
Wow, that's cool. So we're not going to the car show right now, but uh, Hunter and I are going to pick up a uh, kid's picnic table that Kate found on Facebook Marketplace for uh, $5. So we're going to go pick that up and then uh, grab Hunter some dinner and then head back. I'm hoping to catch that car show actually. So maybe the rest of this video, will be, I completely forgot. I've been planning it all week. And then, you know, once I started making this video, I forgot that the real goal of today would be to get to the car show. I think my parents will be home in time for me to get over there. We'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely will be home in time, but I don't know if I have anything going on before that. So hopefully I can get there. Uh, this is it right up in here. I mean, you can't really see anything, but that's where we were. You can see some tents and the backs of some nice classic cars. I mean, at least I can. Maybe with this wide angle camera you can't see, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure. table picked up and my mom called me they are home she's asked where we were and right now I'm picking up Hunter some dinner and so we're gonna go and get that and then we'll be heading back and we'll see mom and dad I'm home <laughs> Ty wants to drive the truck wait you're all dirty let's go let's go eat dinner huh all right got the umbrella the picnic table and then a free chair that came with it <laughs> Pretty nice. Five dollars. I'd say it's worth it. What you have? Oh, presso and pizza. Wow. Wow. That's so nice of you, Ty. Kids are already using the table. Thea's gonna sit on top, though. My mom had ordered, she called me when they were in town, or when they got back and asked where we were. And uh, I told her that we were going to pick up a picnic table and then I was gonna get some dinner for Hunter. So she ordered a pizza and then sent some home with us. And the kids already ate, but they are having a blast eating this food. And the chickens are eating anything that gets dropped. We're down here in the bottom of the yard, and this is where I've showed you all of this ironweed. Really nice. And over there is where I cleared out all of the autumn olive. Uh, not all of it, a lot of it. And there's a ton of stilt grass in here, right? But there's also a lot of native grass in here. There's jewel weed, there's iron weed, there's goldenrod. A whole bunch of cool plants in here. Uh, and this used to all be mowed. And when you let it go, it, it grows some really cool native plants that pollinators need. Uh, the other thing, if you can see, all of the white flowers, they're really tiny. these right here. This is arrow-leaved tear thumb and it's a native flower and it's all through here. It's nice to look at. The only problem is I'm in shorts and it's sharp. So I want to show you the stem of this thing here. You know what? It's going to be hard to tell here. I don't know if you can see but there is like little tiny tiny briars on it and it's very sharp stuff and it's shredding my legs right now. Man, this chicken's in here too. Followed me in. But yeah, thought that was cool. This is fireweed. And you know, before you let it grow, it looks kind of ugly, but then it gets this cool looking flower on top here. Almost like a dandelion, but just more white, I think you would describe it. 
Yeah. And it's native. And then there's deer tongue grass in here. In here is some sort of iris. I believe it's Siberian iris. I can't remember. They definitely planted it. Um, but that's what these bulbs are. This is a chicken. It's goldenrod. Um, I missed one or two of these. I cut all around this and these two are still standing. So I'm going to be taking that out. Um, but this is a deer tongue grass. Snake root. White snake root. Yeah, man, that stuff shredded my legs. Oh. Was not that sharp. So this is wing stem. There's a whole bunch of it right along the road here. And I've just been collecting tons of the seeds. And really all you're doing is finding them that are kind of brown. Let's find a good example here. Right here's a bunch. And you pull this off. And if you watch, I do that, I'm doing this with one hand. Seeds are everywhere. Just disperse this, but yeah. That's how I collected uh, probably a lot. And, and yeah, you can tell the tiny, there are a ton of seeds in here though. So yeah, got the kids with me. We live just right up the road from here. I mean, a hundred yards. So yeah, wing stem. Gonna write that on this envelope and this is giant ragweed. See, I just got a bunch of the seeds from that. It's part of the sunflower family. Check out here on this wing stem, bumblebee. <laughs> this time of year. That's been going for a couple minutes too. Sorry, there we go. Bye. Thea's saying bye to them. Bye. But yeah, that's been going for a good two or three minutes. Bye. Just continuous. Thousands of them. They like to group together in trees too before they go. So sometimes they'll come through here and there'll be thousands of them in the trees. It's usually like starlings or garkles. This here is a hemlock that I planted last fall. It has put on some new growth. Very little bit supposed to be six inches tall. I don't even think it was six inches, but you can see ties going into play. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to check on these. Like I said, planted them last fall. I mean, they made it about a year, so I'll take it. The rest of them are fenced in. This one blew off, as you can tell, and I need more landscaping stakes to hold it in or staples. These are hemlocks right here and Norway spruce. And this one, wow, this one has grown a lot. That's a big surprise. A lot of weeds too. These staples weren't, they were supposed to be galvanized. Got them on Amazon for cheap. Does not look galvanized to me. I'm sorry. They're all rusted. But wow, I can't believe the growth of this one. Okay, I'm glad I started with that first one because it was, I was excited by it, but this thing has put on some growth. That's ex really exciting, guys. I, I wish I, I don't even know if I have video of them. I got them from Arbor Day and they were so tiny. This, all new growth. Wow, that's exciting. This one's growing and looking good as well. And it's important to note a hemlock is not a fast growing tree but they do live to be very old, or they can, as long as they don't get the woolly adelgid pest, which will kill them. It's crazy how easily these Norway spruce spread. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, right next to this big Norway. Yeah, 
Only if hemlocks reproduced that easily. I wanted to check out here. I don't ever check this out enough. Uh, under this power line here. Let's see what kind of growth we got. Probably a lot of invasives. But it's probably be treated. Some deer tongue grass. Some white snake root. Coarse Japanese still grass. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything too special. Autumn olive, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a bummer. Ah, man. Some thorns. Yeah, not what I was hoping for. Oh, boy. Some blackberries or raspberries. More brambles. All right, guys, well, that's it for the day. Here with the kids, having a good time. Getting dark. Um, yeah, I got, you know, thousands of seeds collected from just two plants, the wing stem, which is also known as uh, yellow ironweed, and then um, the giant ragweed. Um, and it's a cool looking plant. Both are native, so why not? You know, I'm planting, I'll have thousands. Some, what I might do is uh, plant them like I planted the trees, plant them in like those containers. And then the rest I'm probably gonna just uh, plant all over, you know. Um, I really wanna find some good native plants to plant under these hickory trees. I would like to fill in that area under there and get rid of uh, the knee invasives under there and plant some native plants that, that are shade tolerant. So that's what I'm working on, is trying to figure out what I want to put there and I think the best way of doing it is just collecting the seeds yourself rather than buying and um, you know these are literally local right straight down the road um, you know I know that these seeds do best in this environment and everything right so I'm not buying it from somewhere that's based in Texas or somewhere like that right I'm getting seeds from right down the road on the property whatever and uh, that I think is gonna work best for me but anyways that's all I got today um, hope you liked it uh and we'll see you guys in the next video don't forget to like comment i love the comments we all do we read them and uh it means a lot to us you guys give some very thoughtful comments you give good feedback so thank you and we'll see you on the next video one more thing before i forget envelopes are the way to go um unless you got lots of bags which i did order today on amazon they were like seven bucks for a hundred of them so they're the mesh jewelry looking bags so those will work probably even better because you can like on some plants like that the seeds will just kind of shoot off the plant um, or that you can't time it right. You can put that on and tie it around the top of the plant so it'll catch the seeds and it won't harm the plant. But I like the envelopes because I can keep them separate and know what it is instead of doing what I did the other day where they're all mixed, um, but that's okay. You learn.